Hello and welcome to this Candlepin Bowling Network presentation of the Friday Night Pro League. The visitors today are Team Central 3, captained by Josh Daly, and the home bowlers here at Academy Lanes, Team Number 2, captained by Dave Godwin. Names you see on your screen, Charlie Collins and Dan Allard first up. For Central 3, Nick Leach, Josh Daly, Justin Waters, and Danny Harris to follow. And for Academy 2, after Dan Allard, Austin Barnes, Joe Smith, Tim Jalbert, and Jimbo Ayotte. Collins digs in. He's got the Dan Castle lead, 5 6 10 to begin. Ballard off to the left, and we're underway. Friday Night Pro League is a three string format. Two match points per string, and two match points for total. It's these match points that determine the standings. Eight points in all. Ballard, a great ball to get back in there. His six pin remains. What's well, going to roll across, but not quite taken. Collins collects nine. And Allard pins out well for the 10. On the off chance you've never seen Candlepin bowling before, a very special welcome to you. Place the same as big ball bowling, except you get three small balls instead of two. And any pins on the plate, as you see, stay on the plate and can be used as live wood. Two boxes each for the turn order. Collins again. Head pin hit, it mixes. Six goes into 10 and drops it. Allard unlucky to only get the six and seven. He splits. Plank playing nice and flat for Collins in front of the four pin. And he spares to start it off. Allard pins rolling, but will not take it. Pins out for 10. Bringing us down to Nick Leach and Austin Barnes. You see that yellow mark that's lit up on Central 3's side? That indicates that the first bowler, in this case Charlie, has a mark up. And even though on my score bug the display takes away only all scores except for the active bowlers, you'll be able to see the mark progress in real time by following along with these indicators reminiscent of timeout indicators, but here they're indicating marks. Nick Norcross, I beg your pardon. Austin Barnes. Well, this is what getting late there. Bad traffic will do to you. Norcross is up on lane four, one three. He steals it from behind and gets a spare. He's on the board. Barnes sends this one in the channel. So a chance gets away. Doesn't get it either time. That'll be 10. Uh, nine, excuse me. And Norcross now on a mark. Two marks done for Central 3. So although it's even on pinfall right now, I expect the lead to balloon to start off. Norcross comes in full. Three and one split. That's six. That should be all the information correct now. Up to date. Five, nine, and ten. Norcross trying to send that pin over. Ends up too full on the pin, unluckily. Barnes, what a collection that is. Three pin pickup. Eight boxer Norcross. Josh Daly and Joe Smith. Trying to bring up some statistics here to follow along where we're at here. Standings right now, Central 3 is currently second place, 22 and 2. Averaging 583 per game, each of the five bowlers. Academy 2, although they have a 4 and 20 record, averaging 566. What a difference a couple marks can make, but it is surmountable. Smith ends up too full. 
Remarked in past years how good he is at pinning, so let's see how he works this out. Daily spares all over that. Smith sends the pin. It does not roll forwards. That ends up with a 10. Like I said, very well pinned out. Those pins can make a difference in the long run. Four pin and a mark advantage for Central 3. Recording. Daly's on the 3 6. Tomorrow. Explain to Charlie, we'll be broadcasting this uh, premiere. So if you're watching this on YouTube, of course, you are. Welcome, one and all, Daly Spares. That was eight on the first mark. And a spare again. Smith close. Hasn't been far off the range at all. Check mark foils him this time. And an eye. Only one pin left standing through the first opening pair. Justin Waters, Tim Jalbert. Recall that Academy 2 are your defending champions. You can watch that thrilling final match on Candlepin Bowling Network. That was the playoffs out of Central Park Lanes, where the visitors are based out of in East Boston. Justin takes aim. He crossed over, head pin will tip over, so he's got the 310 with Wood in front, horizontal piece. Jalbert loses it to the right, but they continue to topple. Diamond and seven pins, not the most impossible leave. Two marks to one standing, Waters chipped the three pin too thin somehow. Tim's looking to get back in, but misses the head pin again, one three stands. Waters pins out well for 10. Jalbert comes back for it as well. <laughs> 13 pin advantage and a mark. Central three off to a hot, hot start. Box two for Justin. He ends up pretty full in the three pin, but gets a great splash, one, two. Jalbert, likewise, he has the high-low jack with Wood, one, seven, and 10. Water spares. Albert Wood did take the seven. Nothing came right for the ten. No mark in this. Pins out well. That's ten. Again, no pins left standing. Danny Harris and Jimbo Ayer. Harris gets a good mix off that side wall. We've seen that a few times already, so we'll look for that to be a theme. Ayotts, two full on lane number three. Lanes three and four out of 44 here at Academy Lanes in Haverhill, Massachusetts. Harris spares. I only have to put Harris this year not instead of D. Harris because Chris is not bowling in the league. Brother Chris, that is. Ayot converts the three and two conversion, just the jolt Academy two needed. You see all that yellow up on Central 3 side. Very easy to see at a glance how many marks they have in hand. Have to be filled, though. And Danny sure does. Seven's a good average fill on that. 17 through one. Aya to respond. He gets seven. Two head pin hits as the anchors 
Hold the fourth down. Harris trying to send the wood. Wow, getting 6-5 out of that was interesting. Takes a lot of effort just to manage that. Hey, let's try. He can send the wood, perhaps. It does hit the seven and unbelievably will not take it. Harris collects 10. Aya gets 10 as well, and he's off to a 27 start. So, full look at the scores for you folks. Three marks to one. Marks are six to two in Central Three's favor in the early going. Plenty of game and match left. Remember, two match points for the winner of each strike and two for total. This is Candlepin Bowling Network, where we simply follow along great Candlepin Bowling wherever it may be. If you want to always be apprised of our latest content, please like and follow us on Facebook, Candlepin Bowling Network, or subscribe on YouTube by hitting the like, follow, or subscribe buttons. Either way, we greatly appreciate your support just by watching. Thank you. Collins on a spare. Half Worcester, I'm afraid. No, it's not. It's still going to mix. It's a lot better than that. And what I said was going to be two turns into nine. Allers having little luck with the punch out. Collins doesn't get the mix. Hit it off the wood and carry him aside. So it becomes 10. Allard pinning out as well as he could. Dan frequently competes with Brian, including with the Pro Series. You saw that with Ryan's Millis knockout doubles most recently. 5-6-10, Dan Castle's nemesis. Third straight split by my counter, Allard, at least. Not four, I missed an indication. Collins, one, three, five, eight. And a spare. Allard picks it up. Defeating that difficult castle lead. Collins trying to send Wood off the wall. Unblocks the five, eight for the 10. And a nine. So a true 23 pin advantage as Nick Norcross and Austin Barnes get up. Norcross had 346 and 350 in his last two weeks. All of Central 3's matches have been home up to this point. Barnes drops eight in the fill. Norcross can't get the time of day from lane three. Evens up, two, four, six, and 10. Barnes just wide on the six pin. Third ball's coming up. And a 10. <laughs> 14 pins. Barnes, one, two, four, eight, and 10. Across the outpost, four horsemen left side and the 10 pin. Austin Barnes' previous scores 307 in week one, 361 week two, and 343 in week three. And counting well in string number one, his second spare. Norcross foiled.
Ran down the horseman, but didn't get the outpost. And he pins out well for Tad. Spare 8, 9, 10 on Norcross's sheet. So Academy 2 picks up that mark, so it is a true 14-pin advantage. Joe Smith out to the left. Daly has had 345 in his first two weeks of competition. That's a thunderous hit, leaving the kingpin. That's a nine on the spare. Smith double miss, three pins left standing. Daly le left of center. Got the job done on the fill, but couldn't chain it together. Eight and a nine. Four minus a mark. Smith looking to find the range. One, two, four, eight, ten. Daly got on the head pin. He's got the nine pin to drop out. The wood is quite vertical against the three. And I'm not convinced the wood in front of the seven will help carry it. We'll see. Smith, a very good second ball. It doesn't take it all. Split conversion, yes. 3-7-10, and Daly picks it up. Captain to Central 3 doing work early on. Smith gets nine. Should mention Joe Smith at 360, 333, and another 333 in his first three weeks. Tim Jalbert, 346, 362, and 321 in his last three weeks. He got the head pin, he's full. Waters that's full in the head pin, and again we're seeing this leave, 5, 6, 10. Wood is out to the left side, a tantalizing target perhaps, seven on the spare. Justin would seem to want to carry him off the sidewall. Not quite, but the plank's right there, and 10 is easy for him. Not so much for Jalbert. He ends up with eight. Sometimes a cruel fate after you end up with a split like that. Waters plows right side of the pin, so it curls around the six and leaves him with nine. So 33 minus a mark for central three. Two, eight, nine, ten. Waters and his in week one had 324 and in week three, 358. He's got the pin standing on this one, three, and nine. Oh, head pin full. Well, I came into this with the theory of his academy. Two really deserve the record, or are they getting some bad breaks? That might be one example for the latter. Waters hit the nine pin. It does not go. Jalbert pins out very well out of that. That so easily could have been less than nine, and that garners applause from his teammates. Waters has an easier route to pin. He's got ten. Two nineteen to one eighty-five. That's confirmed. Danny Harris and Jimbo Aya. Jimbo Aya, your reigning Bowler of the Year and Pro Series champion, two distinct titles from the Pro Series. He's won them both. There are also two more distinct titles if you consider that there is a ladies' division this year. Well, we have extensive coverage of that from the first event, also at Ryan's. The schedule is exactly the same as it is for the gentlemen. 
can watch that as well on Candlepin Bowling Network. Aon against the check mark, five pin only. Harris converts, and the hits just keep on coming for Central Three. Aon to pin. Got it out to the right. That's the safe way to go. That's nine. Central Three is currently knocked down three more actual pins than Academy Two. Right through the middle and full. Harris gets the splash. That's seven. And more good fortune and skill combining for Central Three to give them the early advantage. This is a three and four split for Ayotte. The old adage is to throw less and more, take the three pins on the left side and send them across. He did exactly that. Nothing went over to the right. Harris used the scorpion tail to perfection. That's a spare. Very savvy spare at that. Two more. Aon gets an eight. That brings us to our second score check. Gave Harris one too few pins now. He got eight on that fill, that's why. Got my head down. And one pin fell late. 247 to 202 is confirmed. Back to the top of the order, Charlie Collins. Good splash. That leaves the four. Allard on a mark. And Dan keeps on mixing them. And now lane three producing good fortune for Academy Two. That's nine. Just the break they needed, though. Collins spares. Allard responds. Number two match points for each string, so Academy 2 will do well to cut the deficit. Early 10 marks to five in Central 3's favor. Both bowlers to fill. Collins gets the average. That's seven. Dan likewise. Seven and six, respectively. Collins sends the wood left to right. Collins picks up another pin. One pin gained each of those past two boxes. Norcross and Barnes next. Barnes on a spare, the only one standing for Academy 2. Norcross continues to spill them. Two pin won't tip, but the 1 2 6 10 is a gettable leave. Barnes fill, head pin, two full. That's five. The left most of the three rooms here at Academy Lanes. It's fabled that each room has its own character, both the orange room here, the blue room in the middle, which is currently doing cosmic bowling, and the green room all the way to the right, which anecdotally seems to have the most notorious pinfall. This orange room was actually recently refurbished, had much more retro yellow paint, but now a uh, Hitting the gold standard of masking units, and now all three have the same design. Norcross pins out for nine. Barnes matches with nine. Still a 33 plus plus advantage. Four team central three. 
They've gained a mark's worth in the pinning as well. Norcross head pin hit. Nine and five both wiggling and standing. Wood is nestled not totally against it, but seems very playable and helpful for this shot, triangle number five. Barnes luckless again. That's going to be a six and seven. At least his third split by my count. Norcross, oh! He's looking bemusedly at that, wondering how in the world that five pin sent in front of the eight. Barnes has to really play this on the right side. Very slim chance the wood could shoot all the way over or the wood pinwheel over. Neither happened. Norcross gets 10. It's good to try for these aggressive shots, but it does leave a pin on the plate. Unless it goes, Barnes actually did get that all the way across. It will be nine, though. It's just more profitable long run to go for those aggressive tries on the spares. Daly's on a mark against Joe Smith. Joe Smith, a very smooth delivery. Is Daly first. He's on the head pin, and that's our first strike on a spare. First central three. Notice how that little indicator stays yellow. It's just indicating how many marks each side has. Two to nothing at the moment. Smith wants to change that. He's missed the head pin. Six will drop two, so it's one, three, seven for the out. No head pin, but well pinned. That's nine. Josh. Now this is going to be an interesting puzzle in the strike. He'll probably go for the left side to try and maximize his count as much as possible. Joe Smith gets a strike. for Academy 2 to turn it around. Huh. Six on the strike and eight in the box for Daly. Struggling against that split. One mark up on each side. Justin Waters has one mark on his end of the scoreboard. Tim Jalbert, none just yet. Waters, of course, the defending Class A Atlantic Candlepin Singles Tour champion. He does those home matches out of Ryan Family Amusements in Millis, Massachusetts. Check mark left side. Tim Jalbert. Remember, all these Academy 2 bowlers are defending champions in the Friday Night Pro League. Central Park Lanes gets another spare for Waters. Four horsemen run down for Jalbert to respond. Central Park Lanes made up of defending champions who this may be confusing, of course. Out of Academy, the Team Academy lanes that won the championship. The shirts sport that similar motif. But yes, Team Central Park lanes in Friday Night Pro League has high crossover with Team Academy lanes in the International Candlepin Championships. Eight fill apiece. Waters runs it down. Place that ball on the right-hand side in order to collect the wood. 
Tim's getting tips from Joe. He's got to send it either one way or the other. And it looked as though there was a deflection halfway down on the pin plate that cost Jalbert the mark. He gets 10. Forty-nine plus a mark for Central Three. Just seems as though Central Three is throwing a bigger working ball here. Right on cue, Harris gets a strike on spare. Yeah, it's got a lot of curve on that one. It was visible all the way down the lane. Wood will take a good hard thought about taking out the four pin. Now, this Wood looks laser beamed right at the 10, but can the ball drive straight back as well for the same price? Sends the Wood, and indeed, it only goes over to the 10. Four splits out of five for Ayotte. It seems as though the split bug is, excuse me, that's for a 10. Fourteen marks to seven. Harris on the strike. And he's taken out the middle rows, which again creates an interesting strike puzzle. How many pins can you get out of this? Wood is available. One piece to the right, another in back, bridging the one and nine. Ayotte appears to have an eight pin as well. Harris, good ball. That's good count no matter what, even though the seven pin won't drop. He's got nine. Ayotte spares. And now it's Harris that has to settle for a box without a mark. It's nine, but a 93 through six. Take a look at this. Domination from Daly and Harris early. Joe Smith has that strike up on his side. There is a specter of hope that Academy 2 can at least cut the deficit because in this string, it looks like Academy 2 is running out of time, but still two strings to go and still plenty of time for this match to turn. As it becomes the turn of Dan Allard and Charlie Collins. Allard goes straight down the middle. Collins mixes on the left side. One, three, six, and nine. Their ball's coming up. And Aller gets a five out of this, unfortunately. Couldn't follow up the split. Gaunt's chopping wood as well, so he only picks up half a mark in the process. Nonetheless, nine pins in hand in terms of literal pins for Central Three. Allard, yes, he's got a mix here. One, two, and a good chance. Collins, the 3 6 10. Both ballers are gettable leaves. Allard, oh, Wood, it was in the middle, it seemed, and jammed up the shot. Collins' Wood is not that much friendlier. It could drive through, but it has to be played properly, and the red line just bounces it off the sidewall and does not collect it. Allard gets 10. He almost just shaves the pin. That's 10 as well. Nick Norcross and Austin Barnes. I'm 
not sure I mentioned the number one bowlers. Charlie Collins had a 329, 358, and 355 in his first string. Barnes, excuse me, 10 pin? Holy smokes, it is astonishing how unlucky Academy 2 has been in this string. One can make a counter argument, of course, that at some point it has to do with the ball motion and just not getting enough revs, although having a spare leave is luck, and Barnes takes advantage, his third mark. Darkross has to pin out, one, three, five, and seven. It's all intact. Wood is forming the guardrails as well, and he uses it to perfection. That's 10. Three tens in the past four boxes for Norcross. Most marks right now, Josh Daly has four marks in six boxes. And Danny Harris, likewise. Both have three spares and a strike, in fact. Barnes on his third mark if he gets four. Starts making his own noise in this match. Chance to go into the high one teens. Five. Norcross now, he lost the two pin, so this is going to be difficult. Four, five, seven, eight, ten. Barnes. Oh, Wood ringing around the nine. Across his wood, lying in front. Send it this way and that. Well, four and five. At least he has a chance to pin out. Barnes is a more straightforward way to do so. But I missed it. Nine. Norcross sends the wood, and that's a good out. For that eight box and two, he said nothing lower than a nine. So Joe Smith on a strike. That pin hits only generate a strike about 11% of the time. That would be a great time for it. Instead, Smith will look to the second ball to generate the strike fill. Two five seven ten. Smith mixing pins. Yes, seven tips over as well. That's seven on the strike fill. Daly trying to send wood and it just skids to a halt. Smith seven fill eight box. Daly pins out for ten. Strike again. Daly follow the bouncing bomb. Jack Mark left side and the 6 10. <laughs> That's got him giggling. Smith, yes, the wood deflects in. Second mark. Daly just shy of the mark. He'll have to pin out again. That split he encountered got a mate. Seven this time. Still central three comfortably ahead and pinning. Still eight pins in hand there. And of course, as you see, 57 minus a mark overall in the match. So Academy 2 is clawing some advantages back. Jalbert gets a strike. I was correcting a score. That's what Academy needs. Waters on the spare. Seven, ten, no. Ten pin will drop. 
Nine on the Sperry's. That fills a seven, eight, and nine. That's why his score is rocketing so far above par already. Honors made a particularly goofy spare last time as he waits for this wood to settle. In last week's match, he made a 7-5-3 where he hit Wood to the right of the three, hit the curtain, and then it ricocheted off the seven, which tipped it to the five and the three. And he took a bow for that. He's playing more tricks with the Wood again. That's another spare. 93 and a ball. Four six five four hundred. 400 Academy two is marks to fill. Could be more. Tim Jalbert, he wants another one. Unfortunately, just nine. Good count on that strike and a chance for another mark. He'll have to do it the slow way. Justin DeFill, he clobbers it. That's a strike on spare. Jalbert spares as well on his strike. So presto change oh, now it's Waters on the strike and Jalbert on the spare. 113 and two and 95 and a ball. Remember, it's not truly 65. Academy two is two extra marks. Still a commanding advantage for Central three right now. They are looking for a count on the spare and he got the perfect fill. Strike on spare, and now they're really starting to fly at Academy. Academy can play fast at times, Harris spares. I think it's particularly the blue room that I've noticed have a lot of fast moving pins there. I've noticed this especially with Tony Levesque, another Candlepin content creator, Tony L-E-V-E-S-Q-U-E, -E -E, Levesque. He's got both TikTok and YouTube presence, and Facebook for that matter. Also a lot of league coverage also here out of Academy Lanes. And a lot of great highlights of matches he records, including Atlantic Candlepin single store and the like. Harris gets seven on the spare. Ayot still filling the strike, that's eight. Best he could do out of that two and two split. Harris foiled. And nine. Harris matching nine. I have 11 of 457. Two marks to one. Daly has four marks, Waters five, Harris five. Three marks apiece for Barnes, Jalbert, and Ayotte. Seventeen marks to thirteen overall in the uh, match, so that's that deficit is closing up. Gollett, two full spread eagle. Allard takes out takes out the left side. That's a better leave. Collins gearing up. Boy, he really laid into that one. He slammed it off the foul line. As it is, Allard taking the lead and is. Probable to gain pins on this. Best shot Collins could do is convert a three and two conversion. Send one of the optic pins sideways. Actually sent it down the middle. The void beckons. So actually, Dan is going to gain a mark out of this. Wow. That just closed the pinning gap right up. Now it's only one pin apart. For the two teams overall. Collins, that's full again. And how about that for consistency? Don't worry. 
We got it all on tape. You folks are seeing the evidence. Well, you've seen all the misfortune Academy 2's had earlier in the string. Perhaps it's all coming right back around. Collins, this time he's got on the two pin and he's pinning. Didn't mean that's quite so savage, excuse me. 4 7 and 10 stays put for Dan. And Charlie on the object pin, that's nine. And he picks up a pin. So for Collins, two marks. And Dan Aller, two marks. 104 and 105. Nick Norcross and Austin Barnes. Norcross at that spare six early. He's got the head pin, 5-9, and Wood curls right in between. He had at least one shot where he was perplexed by the Wood. Felt he should have had at least one mark. Now Barnes is bit by the spread eagle bug right down the middle. Norcross, bear. His second. Now uh, Barnes is contending with the curtain, one ball remaining. Oh, and he just barely avoids the same fade. That five box gives back a lot of what Charlie just gave back earlier. So now again, Central Three gains a mark's worth of pins. With Central 3 truly 54 pins ahead, Norcross will fill. That's five. Barnes, three, five, six, and ten. Tough game. Tough to consistently apply the rev rate you need. See many times how his fatigue goes up, the breaks can get more difficult to achieve. Barnes spares. Picks up his fourth mark. He's had a solid string. And three more instantly against that seven box. Across two marks, 103. Barnes has one more ball to throw on the tenth box, going 11. <laughs> 56 minus four. Well, ain't that just the way. If it was of 8, 5, 5, and 4, one hundred thirteen. Down to Daly and Smith. Josh already has four marks in the first half. He's looking for another. Well, how about that? That was actually a pocket shot, and he left the five anyway. Smith, don't fall to. Don't do it. It stays up. That's a better leave than not. That's cost him a pin on the fill. Daly picks that up. Extraordinary. Five, seven, eight. An outrageous spare with no wood in the vicinity. Smith solid pinning, that's 10. Daly gets rewarded with a strike on spare. That was about a 10 out of 10 conversion, so it's only apt. Huge string. Smith's five pin tips over. That's good news. 137 and two for Josh Daly. Six marks.
Smith spares off the wood. Three marks, losing about a pin of frame. Daly still on a strike. This, he crossed over, crossovers leave Kings, five, six, seven, 10. These are on 10th box spares. So Smith's final ball nets him six, 112. Again, Daly's got a vicious split after his second strike of the straight. Let's see, goes high up on it, trips out three, good count. Nine more, 146 for Josh. Scores are correct as you see them. Justin Waters working on a 30 above pace. Easily into the 130s, if not the 140s. With five marks, including four consecutive. Hasn't had a fill below seven all string. In fact, he actually had fills a seven, eight, nine, and 10 on his past four spares. Now he's filling a strike. Jalbert has had fills of eight and 10. On his previous two marks, he's filling his third. Both bowlers on the up. This time, though, Waters washes out. He's got five. And Jalbert loses three. One, three, seven, eight, ten. Waters still on the strike. Digs into the pockets. Bear on strike. Tim scrounging for pins. 21 marks to 15 in Central 3's favor. That's six. Losing more ground, 70 and a mark. 21 marks to 15. It's also amazing how much count they've gotten. This is six. Albert just not pleased with what he's looking at. Tim's got the one, three, seven, nine, and 10. Justin has to make a big split conversion. Just saw his captain do it a moment ago. Just missed the three pin. Tim, a mid, a mid pit collision. Middle of the pin plate. Left the seven and B. Waters gets nine. One hundred forty-eight. Tim Jalbert's nine. A good one hundred thirteen. And one tens and one twenties are pro grade in this game. One forties are simply breaking the scale. The highest road average last year was Dave Barber's 124.5 for reference. One two for Danny Harris. Nickel and dime. Five and dime for Jimbo Ayotte. Harris trying to send the wood. He had a spare earlier where he sent the wood backwards, but this is not the same situation. This wood looks to be laser beaming the five and 10 and Ayotte's got it. Harris collects 10. Justin Waters only left two pins standing in that string. Norcross only left a pin per open. Harris only left two pin, has only left two pins in his four non-mark frames. Joe Smith. Lost a pin per open. And Ayotte's only lost four pins in five open frames. This is four on the fill. Bill Quattle already making a big difference in this match. I'll calculate that in just a moment. Nothing doing. 
Now pins a question as well. Harris gets a 9-138. Ayotte's seven more gives him a very respectable 122. 639 to 565. And all scores are confirmed as you see them. Get the scoreboard taken away, but we'll go over some statistics in just a second because they were quite extraordinary. First ball coming up for Dan Allard. Triangle three, it looks like. Now it's the four and seven. It's a 21 mark. Strike and a spare. I was so enamored by the. I'm going to pull something up here. Central three was getting over eight pins per mark. Academy two, six and a quarter. Let's see if that trend shifts in this string. Gollin strikes on spare. Ballard, nice pickup with the wood in front. Still had to slice that two pin, had the barn door, but that was a great cut. We're starting off hot here. 30-30 from just the first bowlers. That's why we watch every string. Hope you didn't tune out after the first one. Well, if you're still here, welcome and thanks so much for watching this presentation of Candlepin Bowling Network. My name is Greg Guillard, I should mention. Pleased to have you here watching on YouTube in this case. Another match being streamed. Hingham and Exeter. That's, if you're watching this on demand, you can watch that on demand as well on both Facebook and YouTube on Candlepin Bowling Network. As well as having tough luck second time on the head pin. That goes for 10. That's a nifty 10 out of that. Picks up two. Pins fell in tandem for Austin. Barnes mixes out, one, three, eight, and nine. North Cross left it further off to the side. Cluster of seven is a makeable spare. We've seen it many times before. Barnes has wood in back, but it carries it all the way from the nine unless the steamroller takes it. It drops off the plate instead. And there you see a spare from Norcross, that second ball. On the seven pin cluster, you throw a strike ball and a good bowler can take it all out. Another nifty 10 for Barnes. This time he threads the needle. So two points for the string, four for total. You see both game and total on your screen. Pins out for Smith daily. Happen cuts away. Five won't tip, but that's probably okay. It's really getting the two over to the seven. That'll be the trickier part. Look at this wood roll right to left for Smith. It does not take. Daily spares. A much smaller split conversion than last time, but still a split nonetheless. 
Smith takes nine. Four, six, seven, and ten. Wood wiggling on the four. Daily, that counts nine. Ten pin stands. Daly gets it. He had it just on the lane. Counts all the same. Smith again for nine. Stacking up again. Everyone on Central 3 so far sitting down on a mark. Well, not everyone standing. Not everyone sitting, of course. Tim Jalbert. Four pin tips and back, one, two, seven. Can Wood bridge the two front pins into the seven? Waters. Boy, oh boy. Well, Wood sliding between the five and eight. We'll see here. Tim misses on that spare. Head pin tips anyway. He turns around. Two pin wiggles, but nothing happens. Water spares. Yes, the wood did connect it. And Jalbert cleans up for 10. Six, seven, eight, and nine. Consecutive numbers, but certainly not consecutive pins. This is fun. Let's see if playing it in the middle might do any good. I'm sure he's at least considering it. Waters can't get them all, but nine on the spare. Another nine count. I'll bet you anything Tim was trying to play in the middle of those two pins. And Waters, no, he will not sit down on a mark because the wood deflected the ball away. Tim gets nine unless the steamroller takes it out. Just the end of the pin. Did anyone catch that fumble? That's ten for Waters. So again, another early advantage brewing for Central 3. Dan Allard having a very good start to the string. Brings it on to the anchors, Danny Harrison, Jim Mayotte. Yeah, it's been on two separate pro series. Telecast. If you include uh, two separate broadcasts, if you include Candlepin Bowling Network as one, Candlepins for Kids was the other. Of course, he wasn't a kid, but it was a special presentation of the Pro Series. Had Dan Murphy on commentary, the late great. That's nine. Nine for Harris as well, trying to work out of that split. Status quo. Ayot got a break. Somewhat worsened when the two pin dropped. It's going to make it difficult. Two seven. Two pin stays put for Danny. Academy Lanes, Haverhill, Massachusetts, home to 44 bowling lanes and pub 125 in the middle of it all. Great food and drink. Great spare by Ahot.
One of the many reasons Candlepin Bowling and the North Shore are the perfect combination. Gun 6 4 to 6 7 1 is confirmed. So four marks to two. Outstanding. 30 starts from each of the leadoff bowlers. Here they are Collins and Allard. Dan Allard, that is not Brian. Collins won fours. Evan in nine. He's still filling the strike. Allard ends up with three on the mark. Collins a chance to gain momentum. This nine pin will be the hardest part of this. He just flies the head pin away, so comes away with a seven fill on the strike. Now pins some to work out. Neatly, Charlie has a plank on the four seven, so this will be an easier trip for him. Dan Allard has to face the one, three, five, and seven to pin his out. Nine for Collins. Allard gets eight, so that keeping it within a pin. Academy 2 needs to make moves, but plenty of time to do it in this string. Still plenty of match points to play for. We're not even halfway through. Gons lost it out, but got the 1-3-9 in return. There's the 1, 2, 9, and 10. Wood is trying to steer the 2-pin in the right direction. And Wood just snuck next to the 9-pin, which may be able to deflect it into the 10. The spare might be more doable than it seems. Let's see. Oh, Wood is trying to get around to the 9-pin, trying to persuade it by all means. Nothing do it. There's a ball out of the plate, so Austin's going to go out and get that. Always good principle to send an opponent to get the ball off the pin plate. If you have your teammate do it and they knock it over, you lose the box. If it's interference by an opponent, you have the right to redo it. Ten versus eight. Twenty-two and counting, and now the marks start to come up. Norcross, Daly, and Harris. You see all those yellow blotches under their total indication. Norcross got seven and another good count. Good leave, I should say. One, three, and ten. Barnes. Six pin will stay put. It's the outpost leave. Four horsemen and seven. Nick gets on the head pin and spares. Actually hasn't had a single head pin to start a box, but has three spares nonetheless. Can Barnes replicate that? No, one seven. And that's 10. That's three straight tens for Austin. Barnes had four spares in the last string. He's building a foundation here. Norcross. Seven again. And a split that seems gettable if he can spin this wood over. Barnes a chance, 3-6. Wood all the way and back, likely a non-factor. <laughs> Nick says he got it! He did spin the wood. Great shot for his third consecutive mark. Barnes does not collect. And 
and he's got nine. Daly last year had a road average of 120 and a high single of 182. He's got a two and one split. This on a spare, I believe, yes, 36. Oh boy, Wood swiveling back. One behind, one in front, nothing on the pin. Smith's attempt doesn't get on the front of the diamond. Daily 10. Dan Smith a nine. Smith last year had a road average of 118 and a high triple of 428. Been still falling. Here they come forwards, one and nine. Daly's got a better lead, but only just. Nice and smooth down the lane. That's a spare, three and four. Smith, he got the headpin and it carries through. Wood and back. Forty-nine seven thirty is correct. We go over to Waters and Jalbert. Three marks to two. last year had a road average of 120.8. Jalbert last year 114.5. He's carved on. Yes, strike. Five into eight, the last to fall. Tim Jalbert, his second strike of the day. And fourth mark. Bonner says Wood. He's going to try and get a deflection off the front piece. Ball ends up on completely the wrong side, unfortunately. Little faults. There's so little control on the end of the pin. That's 10. Well pinned. Fun fact, if I sound a little helter-skelter, I lost my second monitor. I literally dropped it in the parking lot. The mount failed, and whammo. So I'm down to one monitor, so juggling all this information in front of me. That's why I had the wrong nick, and that's why I no-sold Dan Allard's strike. But I do sincerely regret the errors. 5-8. Jalbert on a strike! Six pin stays put, another collision denies him the shot he wanted. Was not lying perfectly in front of the six, but as long as it doesn't deflect it away, should be okay. Barnes has to check in on the wood. in front has to be careful he drives it straight back for his second mark of the string Albert spare on strike he's got a good chain going still a commanding advantage for central three eleven marks to six Danny Harris on a spare, gets the strike. 
taking all sorts of 20s out of the ATM today. Diamond left side and 10. Seems like we got a lot of strike fills where the pins are just perplexing after the first ball, causing a tr problem on the second. Ayat does very well with this and turns it into nine. Now can escape for 10. Just behind, would not frozen. Nine. 57 through four. Through. No, he was not on it. Have I lost my mind? This is correct. Complete nightmare. 6 10. Harris on a strike. Wood drives through that to spare. Spare, strike, spare. Let's go Wood all the way in front. Wants to play it straight back. Yes, he did. entered in the wrong spot. 270 to 219. That's correct. So these sh or should all be correct as we see Dan Allard come up. 2 4 7 10. Look at all those marks sinking to the bottom. 1 3 9 for Collins. Allard spares. He's having a good string right now. Collins collects his third mark. Look at all that yellow lit up on your board. Six and nine for Allard. Ends up with 69 for the half. Six fill, and that's a 70 half for Collins. Allard spares again his fourth mark in six boxes. Dan technically a substitute on the roster, but doing very well for himself. As Dave Godwin, the captain, sits out. Collins collects 10 on the outside. Monster advantage growing for Central 3. 49 true pins. Somehow every single mark has been replied to from each of these sides. Barnes looking for his first of the string. 1-3-7. That eight pin dropping was very significant. It gives him a good chance to do this. Nick, a Narcross nine drop. Fills a seven, seven, and nine. He's already 20 above the pace, 21 to be exact. Barnes spares. It was just a matter of time. Narcross spares four straight. 71 and a ball for Nick. That surely would be the best half of the lot. Well, Daly and Harris could still spare and overtake that if you can believe it. Unlikely, though. Barnes ends up with five. Norcross, two pin tips over. Drops eight on it. All above average fills. We estimate 6.5 here on Candlepin Bowling Network. 
Thanks, Bob Lee, for the tireless, tireless efforts spent on the spreadsheet. Watching back old matches to get gauge that number. Just to the left of the six pin. Nick a bit deflated. He knows how big a string he has and still has going for that matter. Barnes collects 10. Been pinning very well in this string. He's had a single nine, four tens, and a spare, Austin has. And the bottom three for each side, as you see from the yellow smudges, that all have marks. Newly refurbished room here at Academy Lanes. All new tables. Really bring it in line with the other two rooms here across all 44 lanes. Most lanes in any Candleton Center. Joe Smith is six. Daly, nine. Fills of nine, seven, and nine this string. Smith could do this with the wood. Just deflected it away from the 9-10. He's yeah, going to plow this straight through, yes. Played really high up to make sure that the energy transferred out through the bottom cap of the pin. Nine for Smith. Smith right into the head pin, left the four. <laughs> Daly dropped the six. Let's see where that wood comes to rest. If it stops in the middle, he may have a chance to play it, but it just keeps on going and going. Smith collects his second mark in three boxes. Now the wood's coming back for Daly. Put that eight on the board, another huge fill, 83 half. And it just goes straight on the cap and it drives straight back. And now eight again. 91 through six. Academy 2 generating a mark advantage, but the damage is largely done on Central 3 side. 1,000 pins already on their side of the board. Justin and Tim now. Both have two marks is strange. Albert just had a strike spare. Chaining this will require a good shot, but that's good count. Eight. Waters takes out seven. Forward it comes, that's eight. More good count, that's a spare for Jalbert. Third straight mark. And Waters gets another mark. Galbert gets six on the mark. ends up with seven on the split. It was a nine, eight, and seven, actually. A pin perfect to the first half. Now we drive straight through. Wood's coming forward, but not with enough speed. Let's see what Waters does here. Goes all the way outside and gets it! Six, nine, seven. More circus tricks for Central Three. Now 
third, 83 through six. No accident that the back of Central Park shirts are similar to the motif of Academy Lanes, the, again, World Team Academy Lanes. As if manager Mike Machici wasn't an iconic brand in his own right, that graphical design of the shirts could become a brand very, very soon. Perhaps as iconic as Team Lucky Strike. I think they're well on their way already with two championships. And a mixed championship from the last tournament at Lita Lanes. That's all. Fills of six and nine. Aok gains the edge there. What's in front and deflects off the sidewall and denies Jim. Harris collects the wrong pin. He'll need to pin out. That's 10. Nine's fine out of that for Danny. 74 at the half. Certainly well on their way to collecting an 1800. That means the entire team averaging 120. Lane delay back on live action. 4 7 for Ayot. Still they mix. Three and one split for Harris. Ayot's got it. He's got one in all the even number frames. Keeps sitting down on a mark. Danny joined the show. Is that Wood bridging the three and seven? Plays too far inside, so it's not going to give him a chance to find out. That's eight. Let's take a look. Ninety-one through six for Daly as tops right now. Eighty-seven Norcross, eighty-four in a ball Waters, eighty-two Harris, eighty Collins. Every single bowler averaging at least sixteen a box on Central Three side. Tim Jalbert on eighty-three and Dan Allard seventy-nine in a ball and Jimbo Ayot seventy-two in a ball. Great high caliber bowling all the way around. So again, Academy Two, a combination of misfortune and running into a really hot team. Might be one of the reasons why the defending champions only appear to be bowling. Why they seem to be bowling much better than their record would indicate. Collins 5-6. 9 and 10. Plus one for Collins. Collins last year at a road average of 116.5. And one, two, nine, and ten. Spare for Collins. Allard 1-2, nothing doing. 100 and a ball through eight for Charlie. Nah, it's fine out of that. No 
Barcross and Barnes. Two marks up on each side. So a very clear 60 pin advantage for Team Central 3. No crosses the Kaliri leave. 1, 3, 6, 8, and 10. Wood lying in front. Six pin is wobbling for Barnes, but it will not drop. Norcross ran down the horse, well, ran down three of the horsemen in this case. It reminded me of that outpost leave he had earlier. Ran the four horsemen in the corner pin. Ran down only the diagonal. Barnes is wood a little deeper than the head pin, it seems. Only left the two. Nine for Norcross brings it to 96 through seven. Barnes loses it out to the left. Straight through the middle for Norcross, five out. Barnes, big hit, six pin stays put. Wood will stay away as well, a clean shot at a single. Barnes last year at a road average of 113 and a half. Norcross, 117.2. Spare for Barnes. Picking up two pins immediately. Brings up 1,100 pins for Central 3. Academy 2 has a mark advantage with which to pare down the still 60 pin lead for Central 3. Josh Daly and Joe Smith. Daly already 31 ahead of the pace. He's got another big hit, four pin. Now finally decides to drop and Daly's got his third strike. Smith another hit, 7-10. That's eight on the spare. 70 through six. This is the sort of shot that could jumpstart a string if he could send the wood. Yes, he did. Three marks in four boxes. Let's see. Daly hit the foul line with it. That's five. That's on a strike. Smith lays it down. Five pin tilts. Seven drop on the spare. Daly trying to drive it straight through. Instead, it deflects to the side, and the strike fill is seven. Matching the spare fill of Smith. Smith. What's not going to roll far enough? Daly pins out well with the triangle. Triangle number five goes, and that's ten. Smith is nine. Current statistics right now, 41 marks to 31 in Central 3's favor. Pinning is within ten. Ten actual pins in Central 3's favor. Justin Waters on a spare fill. 1,000 pins for Academy 2.
Waters already has 10 marks today, and that's mark number 11. Strike on spare, four in a row. Four horseman Jalbert, he got on the one three and takes it out. And he's got four marks in five boxes. 93 in a ball, he's having a great string. So again, more quality Academy 2 bowling running into a gigantic buzzsaw. Waters, nine pin, does not drop. Nine pin, falls behind the eight. Tim a bit luckless on that one, but still, eight drop, 101 through seven. Waters collects the pin, he got it right. Takes another 20 out of the ATM, that's a spare on strike. That wood looks quite deep for Tim. Had to really get on one cap or the other. A nigh impossible angle, even for great bowlers like him. Sidewood, well, we'll never know. That's eight. Sorry, the ICBA expressly prohibits uh, try and see. No hypothetical fourth balls allowed in this game. Of course, refer to the International Candlepin Bowling Association. Looking forward to bringing a coverage of the Hall of Fame. Whether live on tape, we're actually in discussion about that. But of course, on tape would allow you to bring us a higher quality image like you see here. Six fill, Ayot gets the four horsemen right side. One, eight, nine, ten for Harris. Woods around. And it didn't cover the eight. Surprise, I thought the one, eight, nine would be most likely to take out. Ayot runs down the one, three, six. But not the ten. Ten for Danny. And 10 for Ayotte. Scores are correct, 538, 477 in the string. 61 plus a ball. Plus a mark, I should say. Yeah. Two, four, seven. Hard to tell if this junction is going to split apart or work. Danny wasn't sure. He wanted to go down low and actually might have been a more sound shot, but it didn't quite make it over. Ayot, oh, full on the object. Too bad. That drives through for 10. Denver Jimbo, who's had nothing worse than a nine. Take a look, see. Five, four, eight, four, eight, seven. Mark's currently 43 to 32 in Central Three's favor. Justin Waters on a pin perfect string right now, in fact. Allard's been doing well with four marks. He's got the six, seven, eight. Collins on a mark. Washes out a bucket load. Seven. Three, nine. Allard trying to send the wood. Gets a second persuader from the right side. Collins, one, three. This way and that, the wood bounces, but not forwards. Allard pins out. 
So does Collins. Again, I stress, Academy 2 is bowling fine. It's just Central 3 is bowling extraordinary. Which is one of the reasons I wanted to cover this match, because I have a feeling it's, their bowling is much better than the record indicates. 1, 3, 7, and 8. But you also see just how thoroughly Central 3 is deserving their success at the moment right now. Currently tied for the top of the leaderboard along with Team Exeter Lane, so you can watch also this week this match on Candlepin Bowling Network. Facebook and YouTube for that. Bob Lee and Paul Grant's on that call. Seven for Allard. That's 120. Collins a nine, 126. Collins at four marks, six overall in the match. Dan Allard has four marks, six overall in the match. Collins currently on 230, Dan Allard 225. Nick Norcross, Austin Barnes on a mark. Five out. Second time he's got a five fill. One, three, seven, eight, ten. Norcross, two, four, six. Barnes, ball rolls behind the seven and eight. Norcross, it's still rolling and dropping. His fifth mark. 2-4, and the wood swiveled over to take out the six. Nine for Barnes. I'm going to take my volume back a notch and see if that helps any. Let's see, does that still sound good? I think so. Just letting you know so you can adjust your device volume accordingly. Barnes. Crossed over, diamond and a seven. Norcross digs into the head pin. Seven pin will stay put, so that's 121 through nine. Although a nine impossible split. Barnes, oh, a diamond and seven. Great conversion for his third mark. Norcross trying to send the wood, no magic this time. I already used it up in the last box. That's very well to get two out of those. This. So a well-deserved 130 all said and done right down to the last pin. Barnes to fill. Across currently on 233. Barnes straight through the middle and a four fill. Just not getting the bonuses he's after today, unfortunately. Had, actually, I'm afraid to say, six out of his seven fills have been five or four. So 222. Josh Daly and Joe Smith. Just a question of throwing that working ball. Daly's got that going. Two, four, and ten, though. <laughs> Smith, head pin. Yes! <laughs> Daly, two, four. That gets a rise out of the crowd. And ten. Let's see. Last season, Joe Smith had a high triple of 428. So Joe, absolutely capable of an explosive strength. Throws a very slow and steady ball. But it can do damage like this. Seven tips as well. Five stays put. Daly washes out. Seven. And he can run down the 136 to try and bust into the 140s. 
Smith's nine fill. Finds the difference between the wood and the pin. Daly's shot. Spare off the wall. Banks it in. Smith almost found the gap again. Goodness, 125. Two string total, 237. Daly on 138 and a ball. Last string was 146. And he's straight through the middle for five, 143, two string total, 289. To the delight of one particular fan. <laughs> Not sure if that clapping is coming through. Two more powerful bowlers. Tim Jalbert on four marks. Waters on six. Jalbert can get another one here. One, two, five, and nine. He's got wood to bridge the gap. Waters on the head pin. It's seven. And to keep this mark streak of five alive, he's going to need quite the shot. Oh, Wood didn't deflect it to the nine like I had hoped. I don't show favoritism, but I do show favoritism against the pins. Everybody hates the pins. Waters. Well, that Wood started to take a turn, but it was just too indecisive. It just stopped short. It's like driving on I-95. Just pick a lane. Wood in front of the 6-10. Waters diligently waiting for the wood to settle. That's by rule. Now sends it through. And that's 10. One forty one through nine. No fill lower than seven. Four horsemen left side. If Waters gets another mark, he could go three hundred for two. He missed, but what a great break this is. Threatening to back door it as well. Spare for Jalbert, his fifth mark of the string, 128 plus. Water spares. Oh, baby, what a day he's having, 151 plus. How high can Central 3 grow this total? In fact, they don't even need any marks for 1,800 anymore. They've cleared that bar. They could bust into a higher stratosphere than this. I have to start consulting the record book. Jalbert gets seven for a 135 string. Waters, this fill is high, and he's got 10 for 161. So you want to bowl Friday nights, huh? Got to roll with the best of them. 149 pins overall in the match for Central 3. This washes out. I don't know if I really wanted that head pin to get lost, though. 210 for Harris. Wuburn won at a 1991 last year. Spare. Or Ayotte. Got the gap down a bit. By roll. Nice to wait for the wood to stop.
Wood into the 10, pin 4-10. Third 10. Oh, I missed something in that. Justin Waters, that 161 was indeed pin perfect. Had six spares, a strike, and three tens. Perfect game, as many call it in Candlepin. That's the term of the book. And I'll get seven on that. And it's only left two pits standing in this string. Sends it off the back piece of the wood. Great shot. 125 and a ball. The wood's not going to keep going back for Danny. He has a chance at a fourth consecutive 10. That's 10. His fourth straight 10 to cab off a 122 string. A on 125 and a ball. Simply extraordinary. So many 120 plus strings are going to go by the wayside. This is fantastic bowling from Academy 2, and it gets absolutely deluged. Eight drop, 133 for Jimbo Ayotte. There you see it. They both combined for 1,304 pins in that string alone. Justin Waters, a pin perfect 161 daily, 143, and a bevy of 130s and 120s. Extraordinary. Two match points to Central 3. That's now 4 nothing for them. And here, have a look at the totals as well. 309. For Justin Waters. Jim Boe on top on Academy 2 with 255. 289 for Daly, 260 for Harris. Four seven ten. Collins rips straight through it. Allard misses the head pin second time. One, seven, nine, and ten. Gons, that's uh oops, seven pin was tilting. It'll be nine. Allard ends up with eight. Two match points still to play for. Standard just keeps going up and up and up. Collins goes all the way right to left when he delivers. Really starts on the right hand of Lena, has that exaggerated motion right to left. Allard strike, his second one of the match. That's six marks previous to this. Collins, likewise, the leadoff bowlers have been well matched throughout. The Kaleri leave. Collins, the wood hit the sidewall just a smidge too soon as it happens. So two questions. Will Central 3 produce an even greater record setting score. And can Academy 2 salvage these two match points? Blank slate. And match points they would love to have fresh on their minds as they take the car ride home. Nick Norcross. Head pin hit, three, six, eight, ten. Head pin for Barnes. 
Three, five, six. That wood was so flat for Nick, and just hard to imagine how he could both take out the diagonal and come all the way across for the eight pit. Barnes collects. Spare his eighth. Oh, oh what a 10 that is. It's a question of a pin, but when you're chasing a high score, who knows? Every match point is crucial. No one's letting off the throttle here. Nick digs into the head pin, two, four, five, seven. Barnesville crossed over, that's six. Has that left to right ball. It's the five pin for Nick. Barnes gets it, back to back. Love a big fill, but two marks is a great start in anyone's book. Norcross pins out for nine. Daly and Smith. So, take note here. We've seen the firepower of Academy 2. They averaged just shy of, they were very close to getting 1,200 for the first two. Don't count them out yet. Daily seven, nine, Wood just lying in front of the seven, uh, the nine pin, excuse me. Smith, strike! His eighth mark. Marks are starting to stack up, Daly. Sent the wood in front of the seven, and he's denied. No marks yet for central three. Ten. Good pinning, though. Nothing worse than nine. But if these spares keep stacking up for Academy 2, this could be a completely different string to the first two. Two strikes and two spares already. Four marks to none. And that's just to the first three bowlers, of course. Daly sent it off the foul line. He's done that a few times today. And every time that happens, it goes off to the right. Four horsemen left side. Smith straight through the half Worcester, a shot we seldom seen today, interestingly. There's usually a splash effect. Seen a lot of spread eagles, but not a lot of half Worcesters. Daly in the pocket spare. The lefty pocket. Smith, uh-oh, that's the full Worcester, so five fill, and now he's got to contend with this. Last time we did a match, Ashley Bratton pinned this out for 10. It's pretty when it goes, and Joe Smith finds the way. In my opinion, the prettiest sort of out in the game. 25 through 2. I mentioned at the start, Joe Smith's good at pinning. Don't, don't make a liar out of me. He sure didn't. Justin Waters and Tim Jalbert. Justin Waters on a 3.09. Six pins hipping over. Nine and five. Jalbert's got a mix as well. Let's see. Is it covering everything? In theory, yes, if he can get the diamond to go and then the ball to deflect into the seven. Let's see here. Waters collects. Off to a good start in string three as well. Jalbert, no, oh, it deflected off the cap of the wood and does not take it. Ten. Watching the best of the best at this. Oh, 
Waters, I believe, is looking for, uh, I guess a ball is the only thing he could be looking for. He's got one. On a spare fill. It's 14th mark of the day out of 21 boxes. This fill is high as well. That's eight. And Tim's got a strike. His third. Three marks showing on Academy 2 side. What in the middle is probably the most tempting target. Can he get this deflection just right? No, he ended up too high on the wood, and it's sent straight back. Academy 2 now with the advantage in this string. A nine box, 27 through two. Waters has, by virtue of having a 300 through the first two, getting 400 is trivial actually for him. Daly is just a few marks shy of that. Danny Harris and Jimbo Aya. Headpin, oh, Danny crossed over. Crossovers leave Kings. Four, five, seven, ten. Nine, ten, nope, nine drops out. And Aod is on 255. As good a bit as you can put on that. Four, five, seven, ten. Aod spares his tenth mark. And nine, pins on every ball for Harris. By the way, Justin Waters is averaging 8.5 on each of his fills, spares and strikes together. Harris drops nine. Aon on a spare drops five. Academy's still in control of this string, though Danny's got a spare. That tightens it up. Aon mixing pins very well. One, three, eight, and ten. Left the six behind. And he's got ten. 25 through two. Let's take a look here. 114 to 103 is confirmed. So 11 ends plus a mark for Academy two. Every single bowler on Academy two is one or two marks. Everyone is one. Barnes has two. Allard's on that strike fill. You see he's dropped seven. That's the one four ten. What is very vertical? It might form more of a blockade unless Allard can power this through. He does! Spare on strike. Another big jolt for Academy 2. Collins collects. Match still very much in Central 3's favor, but it's the string that's a big question right now. Academy 2, can they hold this advantage? See Deadwood retrieval on the other lane. Academy 3, uh, excuse me, Academy 1 in Metro currently in progress on the adjoining pair of lanes 5 and 6. Brett, not Justin Scally. I'd love to get one of your matches in as well. Head pin in for Dan Allard. Seven down. 45 through three. 
Collins sends Wood wildly off the wall. One, three, seven, eight, and he's got a six count. 34 through three. Allard straight through. Collins sliced the one, three away. All right, Pence getting away, eight. There's nine, 43 through four for Collins. Now over to Barnes. Averaging less than five on his bonuses. Would love to get a huge count here. Really deliver a jolt. Sends it off the wall. This mixes. Great count. It's nine. He got a break, and it's just the momentum boost he needed. Norcross, 1 3 4 10. Yes, Wood spins in. Barnes getting good fortune. Norcross spares in response. Could be watching a big turning point in Austin Barnes' season. At 3.43 last week. On pace to pass that here. But he's straight through the head pin, and just as he was trying to pick up steam, he gets greeted with that injustice. No cross. <laughs> Does not actually punch Austin. He'd love to punch the pins, but it's that he's punched out the middle two rows. Five out, one, seven, eight, nine, ten. Barnes. He got that rid of that corner, so nine is still possible out of this. Come across. Sends the wood right to left. Nick just has the seven pin. That's seven. So no cross picks up half a mark in that exchange. Close string, watch for that. 25 minus the ball now, all told. Simply because Austin took his turn. Now it's Daly's turn to respond with a fill on his mark. He's had 13 today. Three strikes and 10 spares. Joe Smith, two strikes, six spares. Including that one strike he had to start the string. Four horsemen. Daly needs good count and another mark for 400. Five is fine if he marks again and pins well. At least two marks would be preferable. Smith can't get it. This one's going to continue to roll back towards the 10 pin. Not going to hit it with the red line and not quick enough in any event. Daly's got 3 6 10. Smith has to wait for the rolling wood. It's going to stop well clear of the 10 pin. Nice stick. Ten. Been perfect through three. Daly's got nine. Twenty-one pins still. That's a strike. Joe Smith has his second of the string. I have to fix that macro. Daly's got a diamond. If you like what you're watching, please like the video by hitting this thumbs up button on whatever platform you may be watching. Hang on. Well, that's YouTube in this case, but if it's on Facebook or YouTube on future matches, of course, please hit the thumbs up button there. Either way, thank you so much for your support just by watching. Daly spares, and he will fill for the chance to bust into 400 territory. Coming up next, first Justin Wanders and Tim Jalbert. Tim on a strike. A big momentum swing this would be if he doubles this. Haven't had a double yet in this match. Yeah. 
Jalbert. Did he get it? Yes, a double strike. Just what the doctor ordered. Seven, nine. Justin Waters has wood in between. He can pin out 416. By the way, did you see that indicator turned green instead of yellow? At the risk of making it look like a lingo grid. That indicates a double strike. That's a spare for Waters. Another great conversion as he continues to build a great series. Jalbert on a double strike. We'll update it after every ball. Score could jump by his, just 30 here. He missed it. Does he catch more? That's nine. The ultimate washout on the double strike. Waters on a spare. It's Phil is high. That's strike on spare. Jalbert spares on the second strike. So a double strike gives Academy to a huge advantage in the string. Not insurmountable, but five strikes combined on Academy two side. Harris, that's good count, that's eight. Great response. Harris could pin out 367, but doubtless he wants more. 1710 for Ayotte. That's a spare back to back for Harris. Ayotte pins out very well, and he remains pin perfect. Bottom three bowlers for Academy 2. Bottom of the order, of course. All are pin perfect through their first 11 boxes. Ten tips for Ayotte. Harris's spare fill digs right through the middle for six. So a true 26 pin edge for Academy 2. This string is tightened up. Three, four, six, what a conversion this would be. Can the bowler of the year find a way? Yes, he can! You just have the feeling that big bowlers can pull out big moments at big times. Harris, 3-6. He just as capable of converting a big split. And that's 9. 52. Let's check the scores on this. Look at all these numbers. I mean, I know that's the premise of a score check, but seriously, look at them. Already on pace for 600 each of them if they just keep going at the same rate they're going. 267 to 240 is confirmed as you see it. Collins on your right, 43 through 4. At pin, 9-10, Wood in between if he can play this skillfully. Dan Allard, 1-3, Had a strike spare earlier in the string. Collins, one spare. Collins lost it to the right. Wood nestled up against the nine pin. That was the play. Wood tips. Come on, four pin. You're wiggling. Doesn't go. Stays nine for Charlie. And for Dan, likewise. Allard on a 62 half.
Collins. No, no one he's getting half Worcesters. Don't have to worry about that. And if that isn't the greatest announcer kibosh of all time, I don't know what is. Charlie stuck out the two fingers, but Allard, Dan Allard got the two. Both put good bids on their respective leaves. Good outs for each. Got to do that consistently to succeed in this game. That's nine for Collins and nine for Allard. It's five nines for Collins, interestingly. Forty-four for Norcross and fifty-five for Barnes. Barnes started off with a chain of three spares. Norcross got a half Worcester. I take back everything. We are playing with those today. We had one earlier, but now they seem to be really coming out in force. Barnes gets a good mix. Even a six will tip. One three. Two pinners are about a fifty percent chance. We're Bob Lee, our executive producer here at Candlepin Bowling Network. And Barnes picks it up just, yes. Four marks out of five, a great half working. Norcross pins out for 10. Only lost a single pin in the first half. Again, all bottom three bowlers for Academy 2 are pin perfect so far. No pins left standing. Pinning gap overall is 14 for 14 in favor of Central 3. They've knocked down 14 more actual pins. Across splashes out the head pin. 7, 8. Bars, spare fill is a good one. There's that 9 fill. Got a couple of 9 fills. You were me, saying earlier, it's only filling about five or so. Well, that's two nines. That's a big way to get a 74 half. And at what a time for Academy 2. No cross. Next trying to spin the wood in, and he gets it. Seven, eight. Savvy shot. Barnes gets jammed on the cap of the wood. Obviously was trying to make the single direct. That's 10. Oops. There we go. Two seventy eight to three fourteen. Three marks working on each side, so it's true thirty six pin advantage for Academy Two. Smith on a strike, one of five Academy 2 has had so far. Told you it was just a matter of time. The best they can do is two match points realistically. But through little fault of their own, Smith. That's eight so far on the strike fill. Daly got nine. So Daly is indeed on clip for a 400. This should simplify matters. Three marks in the half. Smith spins the wood around the eight pin. Unbelievable. Nine on the strike. 60 plus half guaranteed. It's 64. for Daly. Six for Smith with the diamond. Nine count on that spare. Daly's got another one. And a nine for Smith. 73 through six.
Pondras on a strike. Three pins, seven, ten, stays put. Three, six, seven. Albert's got a seven, Phil. Water seven ten. Spare again. Water strike on spare. Seventy seven and a ball. Albert wants pins here. He's working a great string. That's seven, but it's still an 83 half. On a 77 half. Oh, 784 half. Jalbert. 910. 85 for the half. Fussing with some settings here. Spare for Jalbert and a 10 for Waters. Enemy two. Advantage is starting to shrink a bit. No, excuse me. Still a dozen pins in hand. Eight pins. Harris has a. Five pin clustered again. Yeah, seven. It goes. Yeah, I got eight on his spare. And ten. And he's pin perfect still. Only bowler who is at this point. Takes out seven. That's better. Ayot collects his third mark in six boxes. Gets eight. I'm going to need to score check this one a little more thoroughly than usual. to go. Like right Collins, Woods a little deep though. Woods spins right behind the seven. 
Keller picks up 10. And Collins, nine. A lot of nines for Collins. Seven pins out, five, six, and ten. Gone is just the four pin to get. Just in the middle, not much Allard could do on this one. Gone's wayward on the single. So Allard allowed to pin back in. He gets nine. Collins again nine. Seventh nine. Seventh nine out of eight. Or 12 to 396. That's confirmed. Mark's outstanding is fourth and fifth. So, yep, we are caught up here. Going across 64 and a ball. Barnes has four marks and six boxes. Smack dab in the middle, that's five. Norcross washes out eight. Sola had been a second time, that's eight. 72 through six. There's a Greek church, but Barnes can go all the way to the left for the wood on this one. Ends up on the cap though. Across 10. Two marks to one. So Academy 2 is still an advantage, but not as big of one. Big string going down the stretch. Barnes ends up with a 2, 5, 8, and 10. the only one on a mark for Central 3. Norcross crossed over. 4-7-10. 2-5-8-10. and 10. Wood's very vertical for Austin, so he's going to have to really drive through on this. Takes aim. We'll go straight through the 2 8. Door cross for 7 10. Denies him. Barnes gets 9 out of that. Cross ends up with 9. Sixty marks to fifty-two. Eight more marks for Central Three. But fifteen marks to fourteen for Academy Two. Joe Smith ends up with a split. Triangle six in the seven pin. Daly the only one for Central Three on a mark. Here's that fill. It's six. One pin and two bonus balls for Academy 2 to build on. Smith needs to pin out. Daly almost ran down the horse with three out of four. That's eight. That Daly ends up with nine. Come on, Joshua. Let's go, buddy. 
16 pins left standing for Central 3. Strike for Smith. 18 pins left standing for Academy 2. Central 3 only just with a pinning advantage. But that strike on the board. Number three for Joe Smith. He's unlucky, unlucky not to have them consecutive. Daly. More seven. The wood, I think, actually foiled him, if anything. He needed some sort of help. Make that wide angle split. Nine. Single digit. Those pins might matter later. Waters and Jalbert up next. Justin Waters can currently pin out 443. Josh Daly can pin out 415. Tim Jalbert on a bonus ball can pin out 380. Here he is. If he gets a strike, he's on a 400 trajectory. He's already had the double earlier. That catapulted him towards that. He's lost this ball out to the left, but pins will mix. Six still puts him in contention. He'll need two marks to get to 400 now. Waters, thin contact just on the head pin. Eight does not drop, unfortunately. Tim lost it out left. One, three, five, ten. Five and dime. Justin Waters. So it's got Wood way up high in front of the five. Sends it. All the momentum just dies partway through. Too difficult a physics equation. It resembled quicksand too much. Nice out for Jalbert. He's got 10. And 10 for Waters. Under four through seven. Danny Harris has a shot at 400 as well. He can currently pin out 377. He's come up fifth. Extraordinary ball up today. 610. Albert splashed out the head pin. Waters got the head pin. A clamor on this one. Boy, oh boy. That does assuredly deny him 500 in case anyone was curious. He was actually in the running for that until that box just then, Justin was. Delmer does not spare, so he'll need two marks on the end to reach his 400. The marks don't come. So Academy 2 is in front here. It depends on the fills. Smith filling a strike. And Ayotte filling a spare in just a moment. That's nine. Waters gets eight. Still every chance for Academy 2 to get these match points. They are favored for it at the moment. Ayotte's fill will tell a better story. His third mark, he's filling. Five and eight on the previous fills, and he's pinned perfect. Here it is. Punched out three. So Academy 2's advantage not as high as anticipated. Danny Harris not on the head pin either. Could become a pinning duel in just a second. These leaves are makeable. Aya punched straight through. Harris outside. Almost converting the so-called Chester Cove special. This is going to challenge the pin perfect streak. That's a good third ball. Two out of three. Well, that's the first two pins. 
Ayotte is left standing in the string. Harris gets nine. Sixty marks to fifty-three overall in the match. Bonus ball quality has been a big difference that's given Central Three the early advantage. And the reason they'll probably come away with six match points at the least. The last two very much in question. Harris, does he get this four to tip into the two? He sure does. Far from a spread eagle, he's got a great lead. They are one, two, four, eight. He's straight through the middle, second time he's done that on the head pin, second ball. And Nick Norcross is out to have a discussion with Danny Harris about this. It appears only the lower part of the pin is actually deflected in front of the three pin. Takes the red line. Not sure there'll be enough momentum to carry through all the pins. Extensive dialogue between the world champions. Harris takes the red line and takes it through. His fourth mark of the string. 12th overall on the day. Ayotte, that's eight. There we are, one mark apiece, 492 to 484. True one mark difference. I wish I could have shared all that with you. Dan Allard, 90 through 8. Going 79 through 8. Collins, 4, 7, 9, 10. Collins, 4, 7, 9, 10. I think they're chiding him for. That's a great shot by Collins. Two spares. Is that eight overall in the day? Allard can't get through to the five pin. Come on, Charlie. Nine for Allard. Did the third ball get thrown or did I move my head down? Or did something else happen? Collins. Head pin crushed nine. Big momentum, Joel. Central three now clearly at. No? Not decisively ahead. Advantage swings over there. One mark apiece. Spare for Collins back to back. What a great end to this series for him. Yeah, can't get the spins to swing back. So Collins coming up clutch in nine and ten. To swing the momentum back towards central three. That's ten for Dan Allard. He finishes today with 334. Supposedly a substitute, he's been great here. And relief of Captain Dave Godwin. Collins to fill in the 10th. And he's off the foul line, it's six. 114 for a three game series of 344. So just like that, two marks, boom, boom, back over to central three. It brings up Norcross and Barnes. Both currently can pin out 344. They're exactly identical at the moment. Barnes is 11 marks and Norcross is nine. Norcross chisels out three, sabers through it. Barnes takes out six. One, two, seven, eight. Has to pin out. He can run down the horseman, send the pin left. Four can easily turn to ten. It has to. Barnes, oh, seven pin doesn't go for him. 
now the out. Norcross on, got held up in his hand and he's got go. six. This pin might matter. Barnes ends up with nine. Five pins the gap, one mark each on the board. Norcross, triangle three, never mind. Six and five drop. What stops perilously in front? Barnes narrowly misses his pocket, but the seven pin gets heavily hit and will not go. Still a gettable leave, one, three, seven. But I watch where he deflects this one. Norcross has it, three marks. Barnes, straight through. He can still have a 120 string with another stick. <laughs> yes, he does. It's 10, in fact, a great out. Austin finishes with 343. Norcross on 340. Nick's fill on the head pin is eight. I thought seven. 114. Dozen pins for central three. 542 to 530. 347. Josh Daly, Joe Smith. Strike would tighten the match right up for Joe Smith. Instead, Daly drops nine. He could pick up his fifth mark if he can get through to the seven. Smith on the pocket. Ten tips, snuck into the five though. Daly, no, the wood deflects the ball away. The old roadblock. Smith's got a similar problem, but he deflects it on through. Spare on strike. What a string this is. Daly, 106 through eight. Collects 10, 116 through nine. the only other bowler who has one. And a big fill. Big count, rather, strike for Daly. Smith does indeed count well. That's seven, 118. But he's got a bad lead, four, five, seven. Let's see where he places it. Just collects the sticks. That's the best he can do. As most of us like to do, I hasten to add. That's nine, 127. For 364 for Smith. Nash Daly, over 400. On a strike, he wants it. He's got eight and one more ball for count. And the fill is 10, 136. 
572 to 566. Central three, the extra mark in Danny's pocket. Waters on 421 through 28. That's a hay bale. Second time he's left one of those back pin leaves. We'll see if that wood's covering. I'm not so sure. Triangle and a seven for Tim Jalbert. He's on 385. Two marks would get him to 400. Maybe the wood's turned enough for Justin. Let's see. No, it didn't. It does get the five. It wasn't covering it, but he gets it. Jalbert cannot collect. Extraordinary finish. It's not over yet. Jalber collects a 10. But suddenly a effective three mark advantage, two in hand and six pins on the board for central three. Jalbert on 375 through 29. Waters, that's two, that makes it interesting. And Jalbert comes right through the front door, but that's eight and a seven, 10 split, if. There is wood though. Oh boy, now pins are a question as well. I'm asking. Joe and Jimbo for advice. The problem is there's a vertical blockade as well, so it may stymie the ball deflection. He goes high and he gets it. Great shot, Jalbert. And he will not have 400, but he'll have darn close to that. Waters has been going wire to wire, suddenly has a pinning problem, and he goes right through for a six. Suddenly, it's a true four-pin match, and Jalbert's going to fill to tell the whole story. Justin Waters ends up with 439. And that's a nine fill, I think. The seven-pin hit hard. Tim Jalbert will press the button and take 146. The importance of Danny Harris's bonus ball, massive right now. 1911 on Central Three side, by the way. A fantastic score. 1782. Ayot with pinning can take it out to 1800. Again, all the bowlers averaging just about 120 across the board. Extraordinary bowling. Harris, big cow. That's nine. Four pins. <laughs> now, does that wood take the seven out for A? No, it doesn't. Harris hit the wood in the channel. That's nine. The less I say, the better, though. One, two, seven. Yeah, it doesn't get it either. This is a matter of single digits. Central three will have the advantage, but it will come down to the last box. This pin might matter. It's 10. his final box starts with a diamond and seven split. Harris also has the chance to go 390 but not 400. That's spread eagle. Oh my. What a time for that. Still a question of pins. Harris gets the six. Got the spare in fact. It's a must make for Aon now on the spread eagle.
That would. Whirling Dervish going to the pin play, but that will do it. Central three will sweep after a climactic end. So another 600 by the wayside for Academy two. And Harris gets two. Oh well. well. That bonus ball would have been huge had Ayot been able to get it had he not faced such a daunting leave. There you are, the final scores. 1941 to an exact 1800 for Academy 2. There you see it. Jalbert with a 146 daily, 136 waters, 130. And there you see the totals, 439 for Justin Waters, 425 for Josh Daly, and 394 for Tim Jalbert, 386 for Danny Harris. Fantastic bowling across the line. Even the eight nothing matches can be incredible to watch. And you have been watching this on Candlepin Bowling Network. My name is Greg Guiar. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, follow, and subscribe for more great bowling content. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. So long.